story. The disappointing audit outcome signified the need for the Auditor General to fast track a full implementation of his additional powers to curb corruption and financial mismanagement. This is according to Julius Mojabilo, Senior Executive of the Public Sector at the South African Institute of Chartered Accountants. He joins me now in studio to expand a little bit on this. Julius, good morning. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. How are you? Very good, thank you. You've expressed uh, a number of concerns. I mean, we know Auditor General Kimi Makwetu released this report on, on Wednesday, touching on uh, really uh, crucial elements on the country's finances. What for you stood out? Yeah, for, for us, what has stood out in this report, but also in other previous reports, is the lack of consequence management. We've always lamented that every year the Auditor General says the same thing. This has become a broken record, basically. And last year, then, at least the additional powers that were given to the Auditor General, we are hoping now are going to make a difference in that there is at least an additional item in the arsenal to be able to implement consequence management. So that's why our focus is really around what are we going to do better from now on to manage the consequences of financial mismanagement. Now, we know um, the audit outcomes of state owned entities um, were the worst they've ever been. And of course, uh, you know, none clinching a clean audit, failing to comply with laws and regulations. What does this speak to? Yeah, there, there are two elements. I think in the public sector, the one thing that's a challenge as well is the capacity of competent people at the ground level. When you are supposed to be able, when you don't have minimum competency levels in certain areas where anyone can assume that position, you, you are able to find people that are not qualified being put in that position. But wait, what makes matters worse is when unqualified people also don't deliver and there's also nothing that is done to be able to hold people accountable to the decisions they make that deliver us the likes of SAA. Mm -hmm. So in that case, you actually want an instrument that is much stronger than the political office bearers that put them there. We expect them to also hold them accountable. So this additional powers to the AG bring a new way of holding public officials accountable that is not dependent on the political office bearers that put them there. Mm. So it's actually giving us an additional tool that I believe is much stronger than the previous ones we had that depend on politicians to hold the administration and accounting officers accountable. Yes, because as he spoke, I mean, he emphasized numerous times, it's not the first time where he's spoken about immediate preventative action and accountability, emphasizing it report after report, saying um, that uh, it, it's needed. So you speak about these uh, additional powers. When it comes to preventative um, action and accountability, um, in your eyes, speaking as a person in that industry and that uh, very crucial sector, why is it important then that uh, these powers that will be given to him will um, perhaps uh, curb such, such, such things happening and requiring him to highlight time and time again that uh, prevention is better than cure? Yeah, and it's key. I think... Prevention is definitely better than Q, but when you have a political system where we have deployments as a nature, it, you find yourself in a scenario where the deployees are so closely linked to the people that are supposed to exercise oversight. Mm -hmm. That is going to be very difficult for me to hold you accountable because I'm the one that deployed you to that institution. Mm -hmm. So as a result, we are left with an administration system that can ho not hold itself accountable. So now what you have, you at least now have the Auditor General, which is a Chapter 9 institution, and we are going to believe they are independent from the whole system. Mm. And they also have powers to enforce investigations on matters, because one of the other challenges we used to have is that the Auditor General will release the report. There are matters identified for investigation, but they will take forever. Yeah. Now the Auditor General has got in their powers to say, this matter must be investigated, and we will keep track on an annual basis to see how far is this investigation and what have the political office bearers have, have done about it. But more important, if the accounting officers and the uh, accounting authority don't take action, the Auditor General now has the power to issue a certificate of debt, which means as the accounting officer, you will become personally liable mm. for the funds lost to the state for your failure to take action. And this is completely a new way of holding public officers accountable that does not depend on the political leadership that deployed them. Yes. So, yeah. I mean, we also heard him saying that it's a sad day when an accounting officer is not even prepared to react to at least know the risks. I mean, how does this translate in your sector and um, the, the huge dent that it makes and has on the country in its entirety? 
it's, it, it makes a big difference because what you have, because sometimes if you have accounting officers that pledge their loyalties to more political affiliations than the citizens, if they make a mistake and it's only the politician that can hold them accountable, they can get away with it. But if they know that even if they do something good for the political leadership, they are going to get into trouble with the profession. They now have two people that they have to manage. And as a result, we are going to start having accounting officers and accounting authorities that are pushing back against politicians and saying, there's no way I'm doing that. I'm not signing this tender because as much as you will let me slide, the Auditor General is not going to do it. Mm -hmm. So we are now having two mechanisms to be able to hold the accounting. Now we are going to have accounting officers that are going to say they're going to be very careful in accepting deployments mm -hmm. because they let the certificate of debt doesn't go to the political office. It goes to the administrative head, which is the accounting officer and the accounting authority. So before you think of becoming a board member at the SABC, before you become the CEO of SAA, don't accept the, the, the deployment as a token of appreciation for your loyalty if it's going to get you into trouble with the Auditor General. Now, as an accounting body, how much influence or perhaps muscle do you have in ensuring that uh, you know, these preventative measures are now in effect? Our, our work is that the Auditor General is one of our biggest stakeholders, and we support them in many instances. One of them is the majority of the senior staff at the Auditor General that do the audits are members of the South African Institute of Chartered Accountants. So for us, it's more about helping the AG build capacity, because this is going to be a very big task, and some of them is out of the training competencies of the staff they have currently. So I think both us as civil, so organized civil society and government must do all we can to give the Auditor General the necessary support and capacity to be able to implement these changes that are very good for all of us. Absolutely. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, Julius Mojapilude from SICA giving some input.